welcome back participants so i would like to welcome dr pooja jain ma'am for this session for the said fdp on data analytics and visualization tools i would like to introduce pooja jain ma'am dr pooja jain ma'am she is currently working as head of the department of computer science department at triple it nagpur and her research area includes machine learning algorithms and iot she will be delivering the talk on machine learning algorithms hands on using python for today's session and uh, thank you ma'am for accepting my invitation for giving the talk and you may go ahead ma'am thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you for the introduction a very good afternoon to all the participants it's really a pleasure coming in contact with you all and uh, corona has given this flexibility of uh, uh, reaching to so many people because uh, going physically is uh, practically impossible but uh, to so many places and to meet so many people but yes um, this corona has given us this opportunity thank you so much ma'am and uh, i welcome again all the participants for this uh, workshop uh, ma'am i just wanted to confirm that whether they have got an introduction to machine learning in the previous sessions uh, latta ma'am yes ma'am uh, ma'am have they gone through the introduction to machine learning in the previous sessions yes ma'am yes ma'am yes. so they know what is machine learning and uh, yes. what are the different types of algorithms yes yes ma'am yes. oh, okay perfect and uh, any yes. any introductory session on python no python was not covered like okay yes. okay Uh, so i request all the participants to just give me an idea in the chat box at how much you are comfortable with python uh, i have 16 participants as of now so can you let me know that uh, whether you are comfortable or should i start from the very beginning let's put it onto the chat box uh okay <laughs> i have not got any reply anyways no, uh, i uh, you can uh, take from as per your convenience fine fine so because people are going to join again the rest of the people are still to be joined comfortable they are saying if they are comfortable yes mm -hmm. okay not a problem uh so i'll start uh, with python in that case thank you latika ma'am okay. so should i go ahead and present my screen in that case yes yes ma'am okay so if you just go to your uh, internet explorer or any any web server and just write uh, google colab colab is actually a cloud which is given by google and it gives you the flexibility to actually execute your machine learning programs on the cloud directly uh, now first of all you would ask me that why to need this why do you need a google cloud for this so the main idea behind this is uh, the the system that you have is limited on the ram and the hard disk and for any machine learning algorithm you need to have a huge data set and that data set needs to be stored onto your own hard disk or you need, and and most importantly whenever you are executing any ml program onto your data set that data set should reside into your ram the random access memory ram so what happens is ki once you uh, if your ram is small if suppose it is only 1 gb or uh, or 2 gb of ram even in a 2k 2 gb of ram suppose if your data is 1 gb and in, in fact 1.5 gb so then your ram will not be able to handle such amount of huge data so google gives you that flexibility of having that amount of data stored onto the cloud and directly use that data for your machine learning algorithms applied onto it okay so all those uh, who are attending the uh, session i really request you to all do along with me Uh, just looking into it is will not make any sense so do along with me that then you would really feel good that you have actually implemented a machine learning algorithm 
So first of all, you just write Google Colab and you would open this. And welcome to Colab. It will ask your Gmail credentials, your Gmail credentials. Put in your Gmail credentials and come to the screen. Once you are done at this point, just let me know onto the chat box if you are able to open Google Colab. I'm switching off my video so that the bandwidth is saved. And you are because Google Colab requires a lot of internet. It would I would really appreciate if you can just be interactive and uh, give your comments and inputs into the chat box. It really uh, would help me a lot in taking the session. Are you done till here? And then there are three main. Uh, if you click on plus code, and here you can write your actual Python codes. Like suppose I can write like this, and if you click on play, uh, play button, so it will execute the statement, and you will get an answer. At the first point of time, it will take some time uh, because uh, it is a cloud. The request will go to the cloud, and then it will return back from the cloud. So it will take a little little time. But once that connection is established. Then, if you do any transaction, um, any any command, then it would be quite fast. See, now you have got the reply faster. So, at the first instance, it will take some time, but the second instance, it would be quite fast. Then you can also print the type of X. It will say it is an integer because I have changed the value from triple IIT to three forty three. So this was string and this is integer. So as and when you change the type, so it will print it as class int. I hope you are aware of the lists. So lists is done in the in the form of square brackets, and it is a heterogeneous list. You can store any value inside it, like this. So it can have a boolean value, it can have strings, it can have numbers, and it can also have floats, like this. And then I can go ahead and print L. So it will print the complete list. List is mutable, heterogeneous, and ordered. The meaning of ordered is I can go ahead and print a particular element. And the indexing always starts from 0 to 0, 1, 2, 3. L of 3 is printed. I can also have some slicings. Suppose if I want to print from 2 to 4, so it will be 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2, 34 would be printed. 3 is this, but 4 is excluded. So true will not be printed. These two would be printed. So let's see. See, these two are printed. So this is known as slicing. Slicing can be done from the extreme end also. I'm going on a little fast because uh, you told that you are comfortable with Python. So I'm going on a little fast. Minus 1 will print this value. If I say minus 2, this would be printed minus 3, this, 4, 5, and 6. And if you if you count it from left to right, so it will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Any doubts? Basappa, sir, would you like to say something? Basappa, sir? I would request all of you to please mute your mics and switch off your videos. Please mute your mics and switch off your videos. So in this way, you can uh, access any particular value. So uh, lists are mutable and uh, ordered. Mutable means I can change the value. So I can change means if suppose I say L of 0, should be something else. Earlier, L of 0 was 23. I want to make it as puja. And then I say print L. So it will print it like this. So this, this says it is mutable. I can change the values. It is ordered and heterogeneous. Next, we have tuples. Tuples like this. They are also heterogeneous. 
I can have any type of a value, boolean, float, integer, and strings like this. I can have such types of values. And the printing of the tuple will remain the same, like this. The indexing of the tuple will also remain the same. So if I say 0, 1, 2, the true would be printed. True would be printed like this. And I can also have the slicing. I suppose if I say minus 2, 2, minus 1, so the last two elements would be printed. If I say minus 2 to minus 1, so last two elements, only the second last element would be printed. And if I write um, t to minus 2 and colon, then all the elements after minus 2 would be printed. So the last two elements would be printed. Like this. If suppose I say t1 is true, so all the elements after 646 would be printed and all the elements after that would be printed. 23 will not be printed like this okay but it has one limitations uh, which makes it different from the list it is non-mutable i cannot change the value if suppose i try to do this it will give me an error oh so sorry uh, this is also a list. I am showing you how. So if I say print type of T, it will say it is a list. Why? Because I have not given curly brackets. Because tuples are always inside curly brackets. As soon as I give a curly bracket, then it will be treated as a tuple. In fact, not curly bracket also, round brackets, like this. So now if I say print T, and I also say print type of T, so now it will say it is a tuple. See, now it says it is a tuple. So slicing will remain the same. As I said, minus 2, so 43 and 242 would be printed. And now if I say t of 0 is equal to puja, it will give me an error saying that you cannot change the value. See, tuple object does not support item assignment because this is a tuple. As soon as you give round brackets, so this the compiler will come to know that it is a tuple. If you give square brackets, it will know that it is a list. If you give curly brackets, then it will understand it is a dictionary. D is equal to dictionary will go as name. Then the second entry, it will have the key value pairs. Like this. And then again, I can go ahead and print D. And there are many other commands of the dictionaries that can be done. So dictionary has a key value pair. Tuple is also ordered heterogeneous. But the only difference between list and tuple is tuple is non-mutable. Non-mutable means I cannot change. So that is what I told you. Once the tuple has been created, it, it, it doesn't change. I cannot do this. Then dictionaries have a key value pair. And there is another one which is known as sets. And uh, in the case of the sets, they are non-ordered and duplicates are not allowed. In, uh, in, uh, uh, in tuples and, and lists, duplicates are allowed. But in sets, duplicates are not allowed. Uh, OK, there were some questions. How can I add a cell? You just write plus code, plus code, and then you can write add a cell like this. Uh, I think my screen is shared, and you are able to see it. Yes, uh, ma'am. Now it's not there. No, because yes, I have come back to uh, this uh, Google Meet. 
because I was just trying to find out that what are the questions. Uh, so I hope my uh, at this point the screen is getting seen, no? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. Screen is visible. Fine. So uh, then, Mozi, sir, then I think you need to check it from your end that what is the problem. Okay, perfect. So I went on a little fast on this part on list tuples dictionaries and sets, assuming that you already know Python and uh, you have a fair idea of Python. So that is why I have gone a little faster on this. What I'm more concerned about is if you want to run a machine learning algorithm in Python, then you need basically three libraries, which are known as NumPy, Pandas, and Scilearn. These are the three libraries which are used uh, very proficiently uh, and they are used uh, while executing your machine learning algorithm. So I'm more concerned about these three libraries. And as I asked you people and you said that you are comfortable with Python, so I am skipping the Python part. I just give you a small introduction on Python that how list tuples and dictionaries and sets are initialized and accessed. If you have any problem at this point, then let me know. I will. I will uh, delay uh, the NumPy and Pandas, and I will cover more on list tuples and dictionaries and sets. So I would really uh, appreciate if you can just put it onto the chat box. If you are uh, fine with this, and I can continue with NumPy, Pandas. But uh, if you are not comfortable with Python, then you won't be able to understand NumPy, Pandas. I would really appreciate if you can just reply me back in the chat box, all the faculty members. Dr. Please, Rajiv. you may write in the chat box. Yeah, Jharna, ma'am, Kalyan, sir, Sonu, sir, Neha, Purohit, ma'am, Padma, ma'am. Because I went on Python to be very, very fast. Just assuming that you already know Python, but uh, generally what happens in, in FDPs, uh, the, pe the participants, the faculty members are from different backgrounds. So if you are not from computer science, then probably you don't know Python and you have not studied Python. So in that case, going directly to NumPy and Pandas will not make any sense. You will not be able to understand that. Participants, you may write down in the chat box. If I am not getting any reply, then I'll start with NumPy. I think we should, ma'am. We yes, should I go think. with NumPy and Pandas. Sure. I have still not got any reply. OK. Anyway, so I'll start with NumPy and Pandas then. OK. So NumPy, as I told you, is a library with Python. And uh, it is basically used for numerical calculations. And it has very much similarity to, to, to MATLAB. Because MATLAB deals with matrix calculations, and NumPy also deals with matrix calculations. So it treats uh, the data in the form of an array, a multidimensional array. And you can perform different types of operations on that multidimensional array. If you want to access a particular row, particular column, or you want to do the additions or matrix multiplication. So all this can be done with the help of NumPy array, NumPy tutorial. Uh, uh, NumPy, uh, uh, this library. So the first and the foremost statement says, import NumPy as NP. So it's basically you are trying to import this header file, NumPy, and this is very much similar to hash include stdio.h or hash include conio.h, that which you must have seen in your uh, C and C++ codes. And in Java also you write import, import java.io. So it's the same way we are importing NumPy. And what is as? You are giving an alias to the NumPy library as NP. So you would be treating NumPy as NP throughout the program. So first of all, you will import NumPy as NP. 
in between i would be using a file uh, for pandas so latika ma'am i am just uh, sending it to you on webex uh, on a whatsapp Uh, it i would be really uh, helpful if you can just forward it to the participants because i would need that data set for pandas okay ma'am so i am just putting it onto the whatsapp so that you can share it with the uh, with the participants okay ma'am in numpy i don't need but in uh, on that i would need that Ma'am, I have put it onto the WhatsApp. Yes, ma'am. Received. Okay. I'm sorry, something happened and I got disconnected. So I have just sent a file to Dr. Ma'am, and she would forward it to you all, which is required for pandas. So this is where I was talking about. I'm importing NumPy as NP. i'm giving it an alias throughout the program i would use numpy as np and all the functions of numpy would be treated as np dot and i am creating a numpy array like this and i'm giving the values as 1 2 3 and i'm trying to print it so this is the way how you do it i am passing i am pasting the code also in the chat box that you people can try it out and i would really appreciate if it is an interactive session and the participants are also interacting with me by putting the data onto the chat box if if you really want to do hands on so then you should do along with it because that will make any sense type is a command which gives you the type of it and it says it is a numpy n dimensional array i can create a list and then convert it into a numpy array also like this then i can convert all the elements of the array of the numpy array into float like this as array is the command which is used to convert a uh, list into a numpy array and i can also find out the shape of a numpy array like this this is a list and then i can create a numpy array out of this then i can print x and now i can also print 
type of x that is what it is a numpy n dimensional array so that is what it says n pi uh, numpy n dimensional array i can also have a double dimensional array by giving extra brackets like this so this would be treated as one row and the other one would be treated as a second row so this is a 2 cross 3 numpy array like this i can find out the shape of the array but we'll say it is a double dimensional array with 2 cross 3 also oh, sorry it says it is a 2 cross 3 matrix two rows and three columns like this then i can do the indexing as i did i showed you in lists i can find out the first row second row first column second column third column anybody tell me the command for printing the second column of this matrix anybody can tell me to print the second column of this matrix print x of 2 okay so how sir sir is saying that i can go ahead and write something like this it has to be square brackets print x hmm hmm so sir it's an invalid syntax yes yeah, so sir invalid <laughs> so what it should be i want to print the second column actually what happens is the first element the first element is that of row so what is that row i want all the rows so i just have to give colon for all the rows and the second element is the columns the second column now what is the second column or i can give the second column is basically one or i can give 1 is to and also the first column would be printed or i can give only 1 then also the second column would be printed let's see if it works see 42 and 576 these are the two uh, the second column if suppose i want to print only 46 so i just have to write 1 comma 2 it will print 46 print x 1 comma 2 so it prints 46 correct so this is the way how you retrieve a particular element or a number of elements if suppose i want to uh, have the second row 
Now, how to print the second row? First, we will say second row means one, comma, all the columns. So I can just have to write this, all the columns of the second row. So let's see if it prints. Yes, all the columns of the second row. Got it? So whenever you are giving a double dimensional array, so you have to give the values of both the dimensions. Only giving one dimension will not work. Is it clear, Sahu sir? Yes, madam. Okay. Second thing is whatever you are writing is always stored in your Google Drive. So I can change the program name here and simply write FDP11. And I can go to the Google Drive email. And if you go to the Google Drive, there you will find something as Collab Notebooks. This Collab Notebooks will contain all the programs that you have done till now on Collab. So we did FDP11. There it is, FDP11. OK? So whatever programs you are writing on Collab is automatically stored into the folder as Collab Notebooks in your Google Drive. Clear? Similarly, you can do the access. You can have a NumPy array of all zeros or a NumPy identity matrix. So let's try this out also. If it is a last statement, you don't have to write print. It will simply print the last statement like this. Then I can print all zeros. X2 is equal to NP, but zeros, and give the dimensions of the matrix which you want. A matrix with all zeros would be printed. Uh, I think the spelling is wrong. Yeah, it will have two brackets. Two comma three like this. Then I can have a cross product of these matrices, dot product of these matrices like this. I can also have a random matrix like this. So after the program, I can have a random matrix or four cross four and print that as well like this. So, but if you see, by default, the values are from 0 to 1. So, after the FDP, I would love to have you explore how to have a random matrix within a range. Suppose I want the random values from 10 to 20, or I want a random values from 1,000 to 2,000. How can I do that? There are certain parameters which are added to the same command of random. Same function of random, some more parameters are added to it, which in which you give the initial range and the final range. OK? I'm again insisting that you do along with me. Then only you would really appreciate the hands-on exercises. If you don't do it, then it will look boring to you. You will not enjoy. In this, you can find out the transpose of a matrix like this x dot t. See, these two matrices are transposed to each other. I can find out a transpose of a matrix. 
I can reshape a matrix like this had four cross four. So I can reshape Z1 is, uh, or I can say X1 is equal to X dot reshape and say 16 cross one. The number of elements will remain the same as 16. And I can reshape a matrix also. If suppose I want to change the number of rows and columns, array size of six. Oh, this was uh, x2. Four cross four is x. So I have to write x. So that is why it gave an error because small x was only two cross three. Here it is. It was only a two cross three matrix. So two cross three matrix contained only six elements. So I cannot write 16 cross one. So that is why it gave an error. I cannot write 16 cross one because there were only six elements in it. 16 elements are present in only this matrix, which is capital X. So if I do this, then it will work. The number of elements should remain the same if I do a reshape. I'm copy pasting the code on the chat box also frequently so that you can try it out at your own end also. Then I can have a matrix which consists of all natural numbers and do the addition, subtraction, and so on. One uh, inner product and outer product can also be calculated. One important thing is a dot sum. This is very important if I want to find out the sum of all the elements. If suppose I, I say x1 dot sum. So this is a summation of all the elements of this. OK. And if I say I want the summation of this matrix row wise or column wise, so that can also be done. So what I can do is x dot sum axis is equal to 0. So it will the, give the sum row wise. And I can also go ahead and write x dot sum axis is equal to 1. It will give you column wise. <laughs> Sorry. What does this mean? This is of quite importance. If suppose I have a data set which has a number of rows and number of columns like this. Suppose I have like this and the numbers are stored. Like this, if I give the values to different elements and I want a summation like this. So this is column wise summation. Or if I want a summation like this, which is a row wise summation. So either I can go ahead and do the summation like this, or I can go ahead and do the summation like this. In any ways, I can do it. Or if I want to do the summation of all the numbers together, then that is a dot sum. And this, if you feel it is very, very important. Like suppose if, I, if you want to create the grade sheet of your students, then you need the sum. You can find out the average also similarly. As we have done the sum, you can find out the average also. So this is a really important how to find out the sum row wise and column wise. And you can also go ahead and find out the max of, uh, of it also, x dot max. What is the maximum value of this particular? array that will be showed and in this also you can have access is equal to zero so what is the maximum value in a particular row or maximum value in a particular column so that can also be done like this clear i'm giving you a couple of minutes to just 
try all these functions and if you are facing any problems at any of these functions then let me know and then we can start with pandas I hope you people are trying it out and let me know at any point of time if you feel any problem that needs to be discussed. Let me know and so that I can move forward with pandas. This is a thing that we have all done. Some ones, zeros, outer product, inner product, random values. Just check if you are able to do some of these functions. If not, then let me know. Okay, so next we start with pandas. I hope you all people have received the file that I sent to Latika ma'am regarding mobile underscore clean dot CSV because that file would now be required for studying pandas. I hope you people have received that file. Okay. So if you have received that file, just click on this button files. I'm again telling you, click on this button files. And here you will find this upload. Upload and give the location of where you have stored that file. This you have to do every time whenever you are executing this code. Every time you have to do it. So see how much data is available for your uh, reference. You have somewhere around 12.72 GB of RAM and 107.77 GB of hard disk. This much amount of data, this much amount of space is there for you to use. And this is a huge space to be used, which you may not get it into your own computers or laptops. So that is why Colab is used, which gives you a lot of space to be used for your data. So if you have received that file, click on this button, this rectangular box. You click on this, then you upload it, and your file would be uploaded here, mobile underscore clean dot CSV file. CSV stands for comma separated values. So the first step is again, import pandas as PD. PD is the alias which is given, which is, which we are giving to Pandas library. And then we are trying to read the file. What is DF is data frame. 
data frame is nothing but a type of a data structure which is available with python and it converts your data set into a type of a data structure which is python if you type df so it will tell you that it is a pandas core data frame it is a pandas data frame and once you are done with this then you can write df is equal to pd dot read underscore csv if it is a doc file then you will write pd read underscore doc if it is an excel file then accordingly you will write df dot x read dot underscore excel and so on so what type of data you have accordingly you you will change the command and say pd dot read underscore csv doc excel and so on csv is very much similar to a excel file let me first show you how it looks like this is a file of mobile underscore clean dot csv so it has a lot of columns a lot of columns and the last column is is light this is a column which is actually the prediction so on the basis of various parameters of the mobile various parameters of the mobile you are predicting whether that mobile is being liked by the people or not so on the basis of the display which is two primary five battery is one ram is five and two mb internal uh, is five and brand etc etc with all these values you will say okay people are liking this mobile is liked means it is liked by the people and is liked is equal to zero means it is not liked by the people so as i have already been informed that you know what is machine learning so from this you can find out that this is a supervised learning because uh, the data is annotated and labeled and it is a classification technique because you need to classify the data as one and zero whether it is liked by the people or it is not liked by the people so it is a classification problem and this can be done with the help of logistic regression or you can do it with nave base svm all the supervised techniques which are used for classification correct so uh, supervised techniques are divided into two parts classification and regression and regression is is used when it has a continuous data but this is not continuous data so this is a classification technique in which you may have only two values and it has only since it has only two classes so it will be known as a binary classifier two classes no doubts no questions till here so i hope you are able to come up at this point and df dot head is re is used to read the first five rows of the data this prints the type and tail is used to print the last five rows of the data df.loc is is used to access a particular row so in this case it is accessing the 20th row like this and there is another command in which you specify in fact this is slicing and you are slicing the data from 10 is to 30 so it will give you data only from 10th row to 30th row And what is the shape of this 20 rows and 40 columns so if you see from this data set it has 40 columns 39 parameters and the last one this is the prediction so total it has 40 columns and if you look at the bottom it will have 110 rows so 110 rows to 40 columns it is it is not a very huge data not a very huge data and generally we don't apply machine learning algorithms in such an easy data such a small data it it is just for the understanding of machine learning that i have used this data because that will make some sense that is on the basis of various parameters you are trying to find out that the people are liking the mobile or not it is a machine learning problem because you are recommending a mobile to a person and uh, it is a machine learning problem because it requires learning intelligence but the data is not very huge in this case generally we apply machine learning algorithms on the huge data 
so data is not very huge but it is a machine learning problem because you are trying to predict a value on the basis of a number of parameters so df dot short says i want to have only uh, df this i want to do the slicing of only 10 to 30 rows and what is this this is taking some of the columns the previous command was taking some of the rows and this command is taking some of the columns i hope you people are doing because none are replying me back so i'm not sure whether you are doing along with me or not i am copy pasting the code at least let me know that whether you have received the file or not and you were able to write the first command of reading the file. Can you please let me know? Receive the file. Perfect. So I hope you were able to at least read the file by this command. df is equal to pd.read underscore csv. Score clean dot csv. Then I can go ahead and print the thin one, which is only talking about some of the columns. And what is this doing? This is now accessing that thin one. Accessing the thin one, meaning that only some of the columns of the data set. It is accessing only some of the columns of the data set. And in that, it is accessing only those rows for which is like is equal to zero is, is equal to one. That is means it is trying to access only those rows which are the mobiles which are liked by the people. So is like is equal to one. I can go ahead and describe this, and then I can find out the average of the price of those rows which are liked by the people like this. So what is the average price of the mobile which is liked by the people and average price of the mobile which is not liked by the people. So if you see it is in the range of 19,300 both the ways. So there are people who don't like the mobile in this range also and there are people who don't who like the mobile also in this, in this uh, range. Okay, so what we are doing is we are finding out the average price of the mobiles which are not like the people and average price of the mo of the mobiles which is liked by the people. I can also group by all those rows on the basis of is like. So it will actually give me a group like this. So zero, all these are liked and one that is all the all the mobiles which are liked by the people like this so it will have 92 rows and five columns i can describe it also like this what is the count of zeros what is the mean what is the standard deviation minimum and so on and now what you are supposed to do now since you have already done machine learning so you must be aware that how the prediction is done so all the parameters are considered to be x which is the independent variable and this is a dependent variable y. So what you are doing is you are actually predicting y on the basis of your x. So you are predicting the independent, uh, predicting the dependent variable on the independent variable. So what you have to do is you have to make x all the values except the last column 
and you have to make y as the last column. So what you do is you make x all the rows except the last column. Because in the slicing, this is not included. This is excluded. So it is taking all the rows, all the columns, except the last column. Then I can print its head and shape. And, uh, and then I can print the Y. Take the Y, which is only the last column. And what is the type of it? It is also a data frame. And this is also a data frame. Both X and Y are data frames. What is the values of y? One zero one zero like like not like like not like not like and so on like this. So my main task is to pre-process the data. In the in the, in the machine learning part, you must have seen that there are six steps which are involved in executing any machine learning problem. Whenever you are executing any machine learning problem, there are six steps which are involved. So first is finding out what you are supposed to do to find out your objective what are you supposed to do then collect the data get the data from where it is required then prepare the data now that is the most important part which takes the major part major portion of your processing prepare the data once the data is prepared prepared then you explore the data by using different visualization techniques and so on and then you model the data or build the model build the model and then finally you evaluate and predict like this okay so you build the model or you can say and evaluate here itself or you can say evaluate and predict whatever okay so you build the model objective is you first have to find out what is the objective in my case i have to find out whether a uh, whether a mobile is liked by the person or not on the basis of various parameters collect the data i collected the data I show you a site, Kaggle.com. Here you get a huge amounts of data sets. Whichever data set you need, you will get this data set over here. And it contains a lot of codes also, which you can use uh, for your uh, practice sessions. So face detection in images, financial tweets, Star Trek scripts, and so on. So you will get a huge amount of data available here. It's, you see, it's the same command. Data is equal to pd.read underscore csv, the same command which we have used. <coughs> so after this session, probably you will not be able to write a code from scratch, but you will definitely be able to understand the code, what, it, what is written. Okay, now you will be able to understand the code. Maybe you will not be able to write it from scratch, but you can understand the code. So, so we have taken, uh, I was talking about these six steps. So objective was to find out the prediction that whether it is liked by the people or not. Now you collect the data from Kaggle or from any other place. Prepare the data as what I told you. That is, you need to have only these rows or these columns. Like suppose uh, out of these 39 columns, only these columns are required for my uh, processing. So I will check only these columns. Then one of the uh, column was in al uh, was alphabetic, so I have to convert it into numbers, which can be fed into the model. So all this needs to be done. This is the preparation of the data. This all goes inside the preparation of the data. And then you explore the model, that is, um, uh, you do the visualization techniques and so on. And then you actually build the model. And this now the next step is building the model which is done with the help of sklearn. So you import all the libraries. And uh, there is one data. What is sklearn actually? sklearn is another library of Python which contains a lot of data sets predefined. So you just don't have to upload a data set, but you can use an existing data set for your uh, processing or for your uh, practice sessions or for your analysis. <coughs> so you have um, a data set. Uh, which is known as a breast cancer data set, which contains a lot of uh, parameters. And on the basis of that, you decide whether the patient has a cancer or not. 
okay so this next command is you are actually loading the data set so you load the data set sklearn.datasets.load the breast cancer data set and then you have the target and the data variables this is nothing but all the pair all the uh, columns except the last column and this is the last column target target data method the one which you have which you want to predict any questions as of now let me know if you are understanding it please it's a hands on session so if you if it is not interactive there is no point again i am stressing just let me know if you are actually understanding it or not are you getting it participants you may write down in the chat box I'm still waiting for the replies. Is NumPy and Pandas clear? NumPy is basically for matrices, and you want to do different calculations onto the data. And data Pandas is to get that data in the form of an array, basically, or a data frame, which can be then applied by NumPy. So NumPy can apply its calculations. Its uh, uh, NumPy can perform its operations onto a data frame. So that data needs to be converted into a form known as data frame, which is done by Pandas, and then you can apply different operations onto that data or prepare your data. As I told you, the six steps which are involved. So the first and the foremost is preparation of the data because if you are not prepared with the data, it, it you will not be able to feed it to the model. Great, Swarup sir. Thank you for the comment. At least I got one response in which people are actually doing along with me. Thank you so much. So in this case, I am again copy pasting this code. I will share this code also with Latika, ma'am, so that you can uh, do it at your own end as well. You import all these, and then you load the data set. So I have copy pasted the complete code. So you just try it out at your end. And so now if you print it, you will get the values of x and the values of y. So x contains a lot of parameters. And y is only zeros and ones. Because a person may have a cancer and may not have a cancer. This is also a binary classifier. And I can find out the shape of this. So it says it has 569 rows. It has a huge data. It's a huge data with 569 rows and 30 columns. So 30 columns are put it into the x. and the last column is uh, the y and this is converting it into a data frame by using the pandas library and making the last column renamed as class as class Then I can describe the data. I can find out the counts, how many num how many patients have cancer and how many patients doesn't have cancer. So it says 357 patients have cancer and 212 patients doesn't have cancer. I'm waiting here for uh, for one or two minutes so to come so that you are with me till here.
okay and then if i print the target name so it says there are two types of target names malignant and benign so it's nothing but i am giving the values zero as malignant and benign as one uh, the opposite way malignant is the person has cancer one and benign is the person doesn't have cancer zero and then i can group by on the basis of the class and find out the mean and here comes the most important part in which we are actually putting building the model in these cases so now we come at to this point build the model in the case of building the model there is one library which is used a lot or you can say one function which is used a lot train test split so this is the function which is majorly used to split the data set into two parts training set and testing set so since you are already aware of machine learning you must have seen that that is whenever you have the data set it is divided into two parts 80% of the data goes for training and 20% will go for testing you must have also seen validation there training testing and validation uh latika ma'am do i have time yes ma'am you can go ahead okay so train test and split you must have uh, seen in machine learning that there are three things train validation and testing what does it mean you train the model and like suppose you have 100 data set suppose you use this data set and out of this there are 110 so what you do is out of this data set you use till 70 for training and you have said that okay I, now i know that what is to be done like this okay i give you another example um you don't know how to make butter paneer theek okay? hai so what you do is you went to youtube and searched for it and uh, you searched tarla dalal i am a pure veg so i do go for tarla dalal so i i searched for her and learned how to make butter paneer theek okay? hai so i trained myself i trained myself to make butter paneer theek okay? hai then i actually made matar paneer and then first of all like day after tomorrow i am expecting some guests at my home so what will i do is i'll first try it out today and if it goes well then i will make it in front of the guests because if i do it in front of the guests directly so it may happen that they don't like it or it was not made as per uh, as per the uh, the taste or the choice so what i'll do is i'll first train myself through the youtube video and then i made matar paneer today itself and then i gave it to my family to taste it so basically what i am doing it i am not testing it i am validating it what is the meaning of validation here is i am validating that whatever training i have got is correct or not isn't it so i am validating it on whom on my family members because if something goes wrong then it's my family only i don't have to do it to a x person clear so i am validating it on my own family members so i first trained myself on making matar paneer then i tried it today and tested it onto my family members so this is basically validation i am validating that whatever i have studied is correct or not so what will happen is uh, my family members will say okay uh, it it is fine but you should increase a little bit of salt so what i'll do is i'll find you in my parameters that is what you do in machine learning you find you in your parameters so what i'll do practically is i'll add more salt to it okay i'll add more salt to it or in other words uh, you will say i'll find you in my parameters so, so that it is more it is perfect for my family members and then i do it day after tomorrow for the guest that is actual testing 
that is on a X test. So what happens is, is if suppose this is my data set, so till, till 70, I will do it like this. Uh, till 70, I'll put it for training, if it is 70-30 rule. And then for the rest of it, I'll use for validation. But for testing, I'll have to take another set. I'll have to take another data set. Like this. And on that, I will do the testing. So sometimes what happens is I don't have that much of data. So what I can do is 70 rows I will make for training, 20 rows I'll make for validation, and another 20 rows I'll make for testing. And on that testing, I will actually evaluate. Isn't it? So I will evaluate on what? I'll do the training. I do the validations. I do uh, the uh, the uh, the predictions. Uh, I'll do the evaluations. That is, salt was required, salt was not required. And then finally, I predict, test it. So I'll predict that, OK, now my guests are going to like Mata Paneer. That is prediction. Clear? So whatever data I have, I divided it into three parts. If I have the testing data separately, if not, then I'll divide it into two parts, training and testing. So what it, what it does is it divides it into two parts, train, test, and split. So it splits the data into training data and testing data. Is it clear now? So I have my x. It drops the last column, and y takes the last column. What is the type of X? It is a pandas data frame. And this is the main command which converts it into two parts, train, test, and split. So this converts it into two parts, training data and testing data. Uh, I have not imported or what? Okay, so now it is done. Then it will ask, is, you can ask the shape of it. So earlier, Y was 569, out of which 426 was given for training and 143 were, was given for testing. This is by default the 8020 rule. I can change the values by giving the value of test size is equal to. If test size is, is not given anything, then by default it is 8020. I can give it 0.1 also. In this case, 90% will go for training and 10% will go for testing. So I can do it like this also. In this case, 569 was earlier. 512 will go for training and 57 will go for testing. Clear? And then this is basically the application of the model. Now, as I told you that it is a classification problem. But what I have done here is I am doing a linear regression on this. Linear regression is not a classification problem. But if you do this, you will definitely get an, get an answer. But this is not correct answer. If you see, I'm getting this answer. Do I want this? No, I don't want this. I want zeros and ones. This is, this is giving me a regression model. So actually, I don't want this. I want only zero or one. If it has cancer, uh, one. If it doesn't have cancer, zero. Simple. So and if you plot the graph also, this is wrong plot. What am I supposed to do is I can apply a naive base algorithm. I can apply a naive base algorithm with Gaussian distribution. This will give me the values in zeros and ones. So this is actually the prediction. And then I can evaluate or find out the accuracy by doing the accuracy score. So since I have not done this. And then I can find out the accuracy, which is 92.9%, which is 93% accuracy. It's quite good. And then I can plot the graph like this. So if you see, these are the points. If you see very carefully, you are getting the point. This is not a straight line, basically. But there are many points here. These are many points. So many a times you feel that I can apply any model to any data, you will get the answer. But that is not actually correct. You should always check for the data. What is the data type? What is, uh, what is your output data? What kind of output do you want? Do you want a classification uh, or you want a regression? And accordingly, you apply an algorithm. You should not apply linear regression with such types of problems. 
it's a logistic uh, it's a binary classifier so you go for a logistic regression or you go for a naive base as what i have shown you you will get an answer for everything and many papers nowadays research is going on people are doing anything whatever they want which is useless because just application of a machine learning algorithm onto a problem is not going to solve your purpose the main thing is you are able to do correct predictions and then check your model test your model on confusion matrix on accuracy on various things okay okay so what you are actually doing is you are training a model testing it and validating it and then you are also fine tuning it you are fine tuning the model also like this and be very particular which type of model you are applying on which type of data so i hope i was able to give you some insights on to how a machine learning algorithm is applied on to a data and you were able to get some some idea that how uh, the data is uh, up, uh, the machine learning algorithm is applied and now we can have uh, a question answers around in which you can ask me the questions if you want participants you may unmute yourself and ask the questions Whatever questions you have, you can unmute your mic and speak. I think there are no questions, ma'am. Hmm. Okay, ma'am. So I thank hope you, uh, asking no okay, questions means you, you have understood everything or you have not understood anything. So I hope uh, the people have understood at least seventy uh, percent of what I have uh, discussed today. Sure, sure, ma'am. Sure. Thank you so much, Latika, ma'am, for giving me this uh, opportunity of interacting with the people. Though I, I was getting some less responses uh, because the afternoon session is like that only. The people are yes, busy with yes, uh, exactly. <laughs> Exactly, and thank you, I think uh, thank you for the wonderful session. There is one question: Is there any rule about testing? Uh, Rajesh sir, uh, uh, you are talking about the splitting of the data. That how the data needs to be split. Are you talking about that? Yeah. No, there is no rule. There is no rule, but generally we go for uh, eighty twenty. Eighty percent goes for training, and twenty percent goes for testing. Generally, we go for that. You can have it for seventy thirty and uh, ninety ten also, but uh, by default we go for eighty twenty. Any other mm -hmm. question? Okay. okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, you, ma Thank, Thank you, ma you very much. Thanks once again. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all the participants for uh, sparing your time. Thank you so much.